Welcome to The Bite. Here we are at Cafe Lattes inside the Kadena Officers Club. This fabulous restaurant is located just across the street from the Shogun Inn and it offers a wide array of sandwiches, wraps, even pizza. And the best part is you can get breakfast any time of day or night. Pancakes for dinner? This is certainly your place. Now this restaurant has had a lot of restructuring over the last few years and I give full credit to Executive Chef Greg Oliver. Thank Hi, you so much for being here today. Uh, it's my pleasure. It's good to see you again. Yes. And what are some of the changes that have been made to Cafe Lattes? Well, since I've been here, we've uh, changed a number of things. We've added some bistro sandwiches, uh, upscale uh, tequila lime chicken sandwich and uh, fish taco that seem to be our biggest sellers. Uh, we've also added pizzas uh, to the mix and then recently uh, what we did is we kind of restructured the pricing so that people can uh, get a la carte if they'd like, uh, add it for a combo and everybody kind of kind of build whatever they'd like. Ooh, sounds great. Now St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Is the Officers Club holding any specials? Oh yeah, uh, St. Patrick's Day that whole weekend we'll run a corned beef and cabbage special here in the Cafe Latte and uh, we'll also run it on our brunch line which is the biggest day of the week for us on the 17th which is St. Patrick's Day. Ah, perfect. Well, let's get on over to the ballroom to make that tasty St. Patrick's Day dish on this episode of The Bite. Welcome to the St. Patrick's Day edition of The Bite. Here we are with Chef Greg Oliver, and I can't wait to make this tasty, slow-cooked corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, what do we do to start? Okay, <laughs> well, uh, I, basically I'd like to explain a little thing about the, the whole process here. This is uh, just a matter of time, just a, a long time to cook. Everything else is very simple. Uh, it's a comfort food. We, we've got... Uh, what I did is got a, a corned beef brisket from the commissary. Uh, this one is uh, about three and a half pounds. It's already brined, ready to cook. It's raw, and inside there's a flavor packet. Uh, this is about half of an entire brisket. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, cut that open go ahead for me. And open it. Now this could really feed what a family of four. Well, actually, it's. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible you get four. This actually uh, is going to cook down to not a little bit more than half its size. Let me just go ahead and pour all this out. Okay. Get the flavor packet. Let me open it up some more. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Don't a worry. Tricky sucker here. We got it. <laughs> and here's that great here's the flavor packet. packet. Leave that in the container in the there. Container and I'll, I'll so take it doesn't this. get messy. We'll take this big All piece right. of corned beef here. I'll put it with the fat side up so it stays nice and moist. Actually, oh. take that juice and pour it oh, right in there. Oh, really? Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. so go okay. ahead. Because I guess that has a lot of the uh, yeah. meat flavor in it, right? It has a lot of the brine. <laughs> These have been brined. So, what we're going to do right now. We've got a corned beef that's already cooking and has been for three and a half hours. So this is going to be our finished product. Basically, I'm going to show us how to get the thing going. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put it on there. If you would, there's some water in there. So you don't need to saute this or brown no, it on you don't the have outside? No, you Great. don't have to brown it at all. Sometimes we do this with pot roast where we'll uh, saute or brown. But this one is just water until we... Cover the cover corn beef. The corn beef. Now I've put this in a pot that's a little bit easier to uh, film. It would be better if I had a little bit larger pot and keep the water <laughs> higher because that way I don't have to constantly look at it because uh -huh. eventually that water is going to go down. So we're going to okay. turn this on, hopefully without blowing ourselves up, and bring this to a boil. Now this is going to take a while to bring to a boil, but we're going to take the packet 
if you would, uh, here, actually, this knife is very sharp. We're gonna throw a packet of spices that comes with the corned beef into- How easy is that? <laughs> it's about as easy as you can get. It's very easy. So now, water and the spice packet. Water, the <laughs> spice packet, and the corned beef. Now I've taken uh, some additional spices, which I'm gonna explain what they are, just in case there's not a packet in your corned beef that's already been brined. But I will tell you that in most instances, you will find that they always come with a seasoning packet. But uh, we've got uh, bay leaves, which are crumbled up already in this packet. We're gonna give it a little mm. extra boost. We've got some whole cloves also. And we've got some uh, peppercorns and uh, mustard seed and allspice. Ooh, sounds good. And we could give that a little bit extra uh, flavoring. So basically what's gonna happen here is we're gonna bring this up to a full boil. When that happens, we're gonna reduce the heat until it just simmers. And it's constantly just trying to boil. Uh, eventually, uh, like most of the time, if you boil any kind of meats, you're going to get a layer on top of uh, mm. the kind of scum that yeah. you want to just take that off and throw it out. All and right. uh, eventually, we're gonna take, when this, this is completely done, we're gonna take a fork, or I happen to have a thermometer. Uh, thermometer, I can get a temperature on, but it's more about how it feels. Mm -hmm. So if I stick this fork in here, I have to literally push, push yeah. and then it, it's hard, okay? So when it's done, that fork's gonna go in very easy and it's gonna pull out very easy. So and fall off the bone tender. <laughs> fall off the bone. That, and that, that's the basic uh, premise on almost all mm -hmm. of these slow cooked items. Uh, that we can, what we can do is we can take this, uh, if you don't want to tend to it and make sure that the water level is not you know, dropping below, we can kind of do this whole thing where we take the water and get it nice and hot and boiling first. And we can put that uh, piece of brisket, that corned beef, into a Dutch oven or something that'll accommodate water up to almost the, the very top or over. And then seal it with uh, foil and put it in your oven, uh, oh. about 350 to 375 degrees, and just let it cook in there for four hours, okay? And it should be about done in four hours. This way you can always kind of see, but we do that all the time with briskets, uh, full briskets. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want to put them on a stove, we want them to, to bake in the oven. But it's the same, it's the same process of uh, slowly, slowly mm -hmm. tenderizing these, uh, these cuts of meats. These are economy cuts <laughs> that have huge flavor. And you uh, could use a Dutch oven too. You can use the, the Dutch lid. oven. Okay, and you great. just put it on the lid, pop it in the oven, or you could put it on the stove. Um, or crock pot, I bet too. Crock pot. <laughs> it, this is this is crock pot cooking 101 here. Without the crock pot, that's basically it. Uh, let it go. Just let it simmer, and, and you're waiting to go. And then later, ah, when this is all vegetables. done, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the vegetables. The vegetables are easy. Once it's done, uh, what I do is I take out the meat. Okay. Then I take the juice that's in here. Uh, I strain it out to get out all the spices. Mm -hmm and then just put it right back into the pot. We take uh, uh, potatoes, which I've peeled already. These are like medium, medium mm -hmm. uh, potatoes. Cut these into quarters and throw them in the pot. The same thing with- With uh, the same water? The same water. Okay. Same water. That way you're seasoning all the ingredients. Now you're gonna serve this at the officer's club for dinner or breakfast or? We're going to serve, we'll have a uh, special that we have uh, during the weekend, the 15th, 16th, 17th of St. Patrick's Day in the Cafe Latte. And we'll have a special that will run corned beef and cabbage out of the cafe. And then uh, we'll have it here at brunch on Sunday. And brunches are big, uh, six, 700 people. Uh, wow. 700 people last week, that's huge. That's so every Sunday? Every Sunday. Amazing. And uh, usually we have uh, a brisket or a flank mm -hmm. steak or something like that this weekend. We'll have brisket, but it'll be corned beef brisket. It'll be oh, corned beef great. and cabbage. And that'll be the day after St. Patrick's Day, the 18th? No. Oh, 17th. Oh, it 17th. is on the 17th, because uh, St. Patrick's is on the Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. So that's why we're going to celebrate. All right, and it'll be right here in this ballroom, right? It will. It ah, will. Great. And what time is that? Uh, it starts at 9.30, mm -hmm. uh, closes at 2. 
Oh, long uh, gap. Great. They'll, right. they'll serve until 2.30, but the last reservations, are the, not reservations, the last people in, mm -hmm. 2 o'clock. But, uh, yeah, come one, come all. Well, it's, sounds delicious. There's a lot of parties going on around FSS for yeah, St. Yeah, Patrick's I, I'm, Day. I'm sure there are. You know, the Rockers it's, doing a St. Patrick's Day disco on 16 March, the day before, and also Okuma. Resort yeah. all the way up north I, I is going their... to do a St. Patrick's Day party too. Very Adults cool. only. Yeah, I saw that too. That's nice. <laughs> It'll That's be nice. fun this year. Nice. Especially with afterwards, you can go to the Officers Club brunch and have some corned beef and cabbage. Yep. Uh, I tell you what, this one's going here, and I'll show you. This is a half a head of uh, cabbage that I've already got already cut oh, here. So just a rough chop. Yeah, just a rough shot, chop. We've taken this and cut the entire head in half. At the, at the commissary, you'll find this a lot, mm -hmm. uh, either whole cabbage or they'll, they'll go ahead and package as a half. Well, that's nice. Uh, the only <laughs> thing is, is the core you want to uh, cut out. And other than that, you can just rough chop. And it's as easy as that. So in the meantime, what we'll do is I will show you how to prepare the dish once it's cooked. All right. Okay. So we get to taste it? <laughs> we do. We do. Awesome. We get to taste it. So I've got the corned beef. Like I said, it's been cooking in here for uh, more than four Ooh. hours. And it is nice and tender. And we're going to get, uh, there's two pieces on the corned beef. And we've got our vegetables already here that have been cooking. By the way, these vegetables, after we put them back into mm -hmm. the boiling water, these vegetables take 10 minutes. Uh, oh, that's it. The potatoes so and carrots. Minutes. And then after 10 minutes, throw the cabbage in five minutes. Five and minutes. It, it's all done. So it's ready to go. Total 15 minutes for the carrots and potatoes and yep. only five Everything. minutes for the cabbage. Yep. Great. You got it. So, so we want that cabbage to be slightly crunchy a little bit? Yes, we do. Or do you want it to be completely well No, no, it, it's okay. <laughs> you can have it completely cooked. Uh, but the cabbage will break down very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to cook it that long. Now, right now, we're going to let that sit and rest. In the meantime, we're going to take these, these uh, cooked vegetables and pretend that they're not cooked. <laughs> and we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Um, while this is going, 10 minutes, 10 minutes is up. These vegetables are cooked. Now we're going to throw in our cabbage and add another five minutes. And we literally are going to cook this cabbage here. All right. Won't Great. take but a second. In the meantime, we'll show you this meat, uh, the meat itself. This is a two-piece on this brisket. Uh, briskets come in with one side very thick and the other side very thin. That thin side is called the flat or the nose to the brisket. And you want to separate those two after they're cooked. So you can kind of see here, there's a natural separation that's, that's in there. It's right there. So oh. I'm just gonna take so that's that. that's the flat. That's, this is the flat part here. This, you, you'll be able to tell it's a denser piece of meat. Ah. This has uh, more marbling where the fat mm -hmm. was. We're going to trim it up and take off the in-between where the excess fat is. Boy, you can smell Gosh, this. Gosh, that looks incredible. It's too bad incredible. you can't smell it on the camera <laughs> because I'm telling you, this is just really nice oh, falling just, apart. This would be a great sandwich too. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? We sell a lot of Rubens in the uh, Cafe Latte. Mm -hmm. It's another one of our... Uh, bistro sandwiches. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick up on this, but right now, this piece of meat, which is mm -hmm. the flat part, this was the, the top, this piece of meat, you can see all the grains running this way. Yes. And it usually starts, it always starts at a corner and it goes that way. So when we slice any brisket, or f for that matter, most any piece of meat, we wanna go across the grain. So I, I don't wanna go with the grain because when I do, then all the meat will be kind of stringy. So I wanna, I'm gonna flip this over and then I am going to slice across the grain. And you'll see it's, wow, 
This is nice. Wow. Can't get more tender than that. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it smells wonderful, it looks wonderful. Sorry, we got a so little. So we just serve it basically in slices? Yes, that's how we're going to do it. You can, uh, you can serve it into larger chunks. All right. Uh, I bet you need a serving home style. dish. Yeah, if you would, <laughs> you put that serving dish up there. Right there. I'll take, uh, take this one here and also slice. Now, if the, the brisket is cooked properly, it's going to be tender no matter if the brisket slice is thin mm -hmm. or thick. Uh, if you cook it to the point that it's like falling apart, then you have to cut it thick just from necessity. Really? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It's, this it's looks perfect. perfect. So we're going to line that up in here. Oh, that's a big portion. Well, we're, we're, doing, the, we're doing the quote. Family style. Family style. <laughs> three to four people here. Uh, actually, I weighed this uh, prior to uh, coming on air here. And that, that three pound piece was down to about 1.6 pounds. So you lost some in trim, really? but you lost a lot of uh, that fat so about in, half. into the liquid. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and here we so have our So now cabin. we're going to take Wow, this looks so nice. Nice and fresh. Now I'd say this is pretty healthy, wouldn't you, Chef Oh yeah, Chef yeah. This is very healthy yeah, no actually, sauces uh, considering or uh, what what we do when you when you you can see this uh, starting to kind of get a film on mm -hmm. the top that we're going to take off. When that comes off, every time you do that, you're taking off the fat as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And then when it's completely done and you strain that out, and uh, if you see any uh, fat, they call them eyes because they have get in little droplets mm -hmm. on the top when it's hot. It, when it's cold, it'll just solidify. You can just take it right off. Uh, but when it's hot, you can just skim that off. That way you're, you're getting rid of uh, the majority of all the fats that have cooked out of the dish. All right, so can we taste this now? Right. I'm dying to. Uh, me too. <laughs> Let's put a little bit of our uh, a little bit of our liquid on top here. Ooh. Okay, so use the braising liquid as yep. a little light sauce. This sauce. Wow, this is quite a dish. Perfect breakfast food, if you actually think about it. <laughs> nice All for right. brunch or dinner. All right. Joe's not going to get any today. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming right. down here. Mm. Oh man, very nice. Which, almost you don't need to chew it. <laughs> it's so and, tender. And that's the idea. Thank you so much for mm. making this today, Chef Oliver. <laughs> it was just amazing. I can't wait to finish it as soon as the show is over. And I just can't wait till St. Patrick's Day here at Kadena. That's, it's my pleasure. We're, now, uh, we're always excited when we can show off uh, stuff that we do here. We're part of the bigger FSS team and yes. we like to uh, have everybody that's civilian, military, local, national, anytime that they can uh, frequent any of the FSS facilities, and especially the Oak Club, we're really happy. Great, thank you so much. Now, if you didn't catch this recipe, you can just find it on our website, KadenaFSS.com, and you can also find about other St. Patrick's Day happenings at our Kadena Crawl section of Venture Magazine. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on The Bite. Oh, this is gonna